Did you know that only 6% of the land on Earth is covered by jungles? But amazingly, half of all species live there. They usually surround a rainforest, and they're located in many parts of the world. They're typically found near the equator as they need warm environments with hot temperatures in Central and South America. There are also jungles in Africa and Asia, and a lot of unusual things turn up there. Is that a horn frog? I have no idea what that is. That is amazing. I don't think this is a Malayan horn frog. Not just animals and plants. With these videos, you'll be surprised. 15 most mysterious jungle discoveries in the world. <laughs> Number 15. Monkey Buffet. Lop Buri is one of the oldest cities in Thailand, home to some spectacular ruins and top attractions. One of Thailand's biggest festivals is the Monkey Festival. Visitors may feel like they've stepped right into the filming of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. On the last Sunday of November, among the ruins of a temple, a bountiful banquet awaits the guests of honor, none of whom are human. This feast is held in celebration of Lop Buri's thousands of monkeys, thought to bring good luck to the area and its people. The most important guests of the evening are, of course, the long-tailed macaques. They have certainly become members of the city in their own way and have intermixed with locals in everyday life. It's not uncommon to see these mischievous creatures roaming the streets and intermixing with locals and foreigners alike. The Monkey Buffet Festival kicks off with an opening ceremony that includes performances by dancers in monkey costumes. When the monkeys arrive, hosts remove sheets from the banquet tables, revealing decorative spreads. The macaques jump across tables and climb towering food pyramids, indulging in the nearly two tons of offerings. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Some stories are so incredible that they become more like legends. So was the case with a girl who survived a plane accident that landed her alone in the Amazon jungle. She not only made it through the rainforest while injured, but a far more curious mystery surrounds her. How did she survive the crash at all? as she was the sole survivor among 91 other people on the plane. On Christmas Eve 1971, the 17-year-old boarded at the airport in Peru with her mother. They had only been flying in the commercial plane for about 30 minutes when they flew through a sudden and violent storm. The plane was struck by lightning and in an instant began to break apart. Passengers were sent falling from the plane two miles above the Peruvian Amazon. Yet, she made it. Armed with a bag of sweets from the plane, the teenager found a stream and followed it. Reminded of her biologist father's advice that it would always lead to a larger river and to people. But in the jungle, it can also lead to so much more. Comment below with your thoughts using the hashtag open discussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Harak Butt Face Located in a spectacular, super remote part of southeast Peru, is the rock face naturally formed or has it been sculpted? Due to the sheer size of the Amazon, out-of-place structures and ancient remains are still hidden in its faraway corners, like this image and finely detailed human face seemingly carved from a rock overhang. Located deep in the secluded Peruvian Amazon, it's revered by the Harak Butt tribe. But is it a natural phenomenon or a man-made monument? There are no other rocks remotely similar in shape in that river valley. It's perfectly overlooking a valley and presides over a waterfall in a basin that resembles an amphitheater. There are markings all over it too that indicate it was hacked out with rudimentary tools. According to the elders of the local tribes, the stone face is like a god for the Harakbut people. Usually it's covered in moss, about 25 feet tall, facing east towards Inti, the Inca sun god. It's an area of significant historical importance. The vast existence of the carved face has been the stuff of legend, passed down for generations among tribal families. Constant attempts to preserve their ancestral home and their traditional ways of life are undertaken by the Harakbut tribe. Today, this region is their last refuge and there are only 5,000 of them left. Number 13. Islands in the Sky this mystical mountain is believed to have inspired the setting for Arthur Conan Doyle's 1912 classic novel, The Lost World, where prehistoric creatures survived. It certainly fits the bill. Defended by seemingly impenetrable 1,300-foot high cliffs, the clouds give the impression of islands in the sky. Sitting on the border of Venezuela and Brazil, Mount Roraima is part of a chain of flat-topped mountains known locally as Tapui. 
The word means house of the gods in the native tongue of the indigenous people in the region. For centuries, no one ventured up onto the plateau for fear of reprisal by the gods, but also because of reports of bizarre creatures living up there. All sorts of legends and myths developed of flying pterodactyls and a vicious race of ape men called Didis. Culturally, the mountain has long held significance to the indigenous people of the area and features prominently in their myths and folklore. The flat summit is home to many species found nowhere else on Earth. Its near daily rains have also created a unique ecosystem and some of the highest waterfalls in the world. While its cliff walls are only scalable by the most experienced of climbers, there's a path up the mountain's natural ramp-like path, usually a two-day hike. Number 12. Creepy Sacrificial Caves The Mayan people believe that the universe was divided into the sky, the earth, and the underworld, in which caves functioned as a portal or gateway, an underworld realm ruled by the Mayan death gods and their helpers. This cave of the Crystal Sepulchre is a Maya ceremonial cave site located in the Cayo district of Belize. The underground system stretches for around 3 miles in length and contains large cave formations and chambers over 70 feet in height. A stream runs through the cave that's considered the birthplace of water and associated with the Maya rain god. The cave contains dozens of skeletons including the calcified remains of an 18-year-old woman known as the Crystal Maiden. The ceramics at the site are significant, partly because they were used for ceremonial purposes. Many of the artifacts and remains are completely calcified to the cave floor. They also modified cave formations here, in some instances to create altars for the offerings and others to create silhouettes of faces and animals or to project a shadow image into the cave. The cave is extensively decorated with cave formations in the upper passages. Strange ceiling and floor projectiles formed as water and minerals dripped and solidified for centuries. Number 11. The Jinglat According to an Indonesian legend, a jinglat was a creature who wanted to learn the way to eternal life. It's also said to be a hermit who worshipped demons to gain power and ability. And locals even say if a person with great supernatural power meditates in a certain cave, they'll become a jinglat. It's described as looking much like a tiny, living human doll. It's a small creature of Indonesian culture and mythology. It has the appearance of a deformed humanoid, whose size is up to 5 inches. They have long hair, which grows sparse and stiff through the legs and long nails. The doll itself does nothing, but when imbued with black magic, it's said to provide protection to its master, take revenge on an enemy, or work as a good luck charm. Folklore states that they were formerly human beings. In Indonesia, there have been several exhibitions of jinglat specimens found and showcased. People pay big bucks for these demonic dolls. Most are found on the islands of Java and Sumatra and are held as private collections of supernatural researchers and fans. Others still maintain that there are no more than man-made toys with no supernatural power whatsoever. Yet the Jinglot is an actively believed myth that many people believe to be real. Number 10. Mysterious Hobbit On a remote island in the country of Indonesia, a team of scientists was meticulously excavating a cave. They were in the Liang Bua cave with low expectations, but what they found shattered long-standing beliefs surrounding human evolution. The team gently came face to face with a new species of human. A partial skeleton of a humanoid creature that stood less than four feet high was exhumed and promptly named the Hobbit. Even more shocking was the fact that the discovery of the human Hobbit was the fact it may well have existed alongside humans. In fact, this footage indicates that they're very much still around and recently they were spotted by jungle rangers. They say they twice saw a group of about 15 and possibly small humans walking through a jungle swamp at the Wei Kambas National Park in Lampung. Since the Hobbit discovery, rumors are still circulating that these small people never died out at all. The rumors suggest that the Hobbit people have been living in eastern Indonesia in the remote mountains. The mountain caves of eastern Indonesia's remote islands are still untouched territory, so there could be many mysterious Hobbits out there. Number 9. World's Longest Cave Check out this impressive and absolutely huge cave. There's enough room in the cave to fit an entire Boeing 747 in its largest passage and a New York City block, skyscrapers and all. Located near the Laos-Vietnam border, San Dung Cave is 3 million years old and 1.35 billion cubic feet in size, the largest cave in the world by volume. Inside, you'll find the largest stalagmite known to man hanging at 262 feet tall and fossils dating back millions of years. 
It has an internal, fast-flowing subterranean river and is even its own weather system, a rainforest too. Plus, it's decorated with rare limestone pearls. It's literally a feast of an ecosystem. Snakes, monkeys, flying foxes, squirrels, birds and rats have been spotted thriving in the cave and seven new species of insects have been discovered inside too. And recently, a team of divers discovered that this massive cave is connected to another cave. It was formed 450 million years ago. It's a whole other world, devoid of much human interaction. If you visit, you'll be walking into an image of Earth as it was hundreds of millions of years ago. You're going to have to book in advance though. Only a thousand people per year are allowed to enter. Number 8. Horned Leaf Frog the Malayan horned leaf frog is a unique species of frog in the rainforest areas of southern Thailand and Malaysia to Singapore, Sumatra, and Borneo. They're light to dark brown with varying patterns and camouflage very well with the forest floor. The upper eyelids and snout are drawn out into long triangular projections, forming what look like horns, giving them their common name. The Malayan horned frog is an incredible marvel of evolution with unique physical features and habits that make it virtually impossible to visually detect amongst leaf glitter, the inhabitant of southeastern Asia's tropical rainforest is one of nature's most cryptic amphibians. This master of camouflage lives a stealthy existence in its native habitat. The frog could easily be mistaken for a dead leaf on the forest floor. They're extremely hard to detect, even if you're looking right at it. However, they do give away their direction, as at night they give a call, a distinctive honk, Terrestrial inhabits, this frog appears to be most often observed near stream banks and other bodies of water. They have voracious appetites and will eat pretty much anything they can overpower, which is a lot considering their large size. But wait, that's not all. This horned frog is probably cannibalistic as well. Number 7. World's Biggest Snake Anacondas feature prominently in South American myths sometimes appearing as magical shapeshifters, as the creator of water, as vicious human eaters, or as magical spiritual beings with healing properties. Just look at how big they grow here. Male and female anacondas show the biggest size differences on Earth. Green anacondas demonstrate the biggest size gap among terrestrial vertebrates. While males can reach an average length of about 10 feet, females can grow up to 25 feet long. Even bigger sometimes, the largest anaconda was 33 feet, three feet across at its widest part, plus it weighed 880 pounds. This snake was discovered at a construction site in Brazil. And yes, when they're this big, they're very capable of eating a human, and they won't say no to snacking on other big reptiles. There's the green anaconda, the yellow anaconda, the dark spotted anaconda, and the Bolivian anaconda. They can be differentiated from one another genetically, but also based on their size and geographic range. When most people say anaconda, they're actually referring to the green anaconda, the largest of the four species. The green anaconda is the heaviest snake in the world and one of the longest. Number 6. Shrew Poo Plant For these small tropical mammals called tree shrews, this pitcher plant serves as a convenient place to poop. But the jug-shaped plants actually benefit from the shrew poop. They use the animal feces as a much-needed vitamin source. The shrews also return to the same plants time and time again. If you're looking for that mutually symbiotic relationship, this is it. It's a toilet for the mammal and a nutrient for the pitcher plant. In fact, these particular pitcher plants sometimes get 100% of their much needed nitrogen this way. A mature pitcher plant adheres to vines and winds up above the ground where they literally act as shrew toilets. Mountain shrews like this enjoy licking nectar from the plant's leaves while simultaneously defecating into its wide opening. Basically, it's a toilet complete with a feeding station, and there's no way for the animals to miss the hole. The shape of the pitcher opening and orientation of the leaf lid that's coated with nectar ensure a tree shrew will position its hindquarters over the orifice while feeding. Most pitcher plants are carnivorous, trapping ants and other insects that slip down the sides of the pitcher into a pool of digestive enzymes. But this type of pitcher plant feeds on true poo. Plain and simple, you gotta go. We can all relate to that. Number 5. Heavy Metal Tree the plant that bleeds metal, it can be found in the southern and northern parts of the New Caledonia, an island east of Australia, as well as all along the east coast where the soils are heavy in nickel, often in dense humid forests. While most plants need a small amount of nickel to survive, too much of it is generally seen as toxic. However, these shrubs have about 25% nickel as dry weight. This is so high that the metal seeps out in the form of a bluish-green sap. 
This specialized group of tree has evolved to take up the normally toxic metals into their stems, leaves, and even seeds. This tree is a rainforest shrub and is one of about 75 other trees that were recently discovered to be hyperaccumulators. What does this mean? Well, this term is used in the case for the accumulation of metal in these plants. The tree's unusual affinity for nickel first came to light in the 1970s, and research into other hyperaccumulator plants has increased since then. Scientists are hopeful that hyperaccumulators could be used to clean soil where there's been a buildup of toxic material due to human activity. Aside from this, there doesn't seem to be much information at all about this species. The population size of this species is not yet known. Number 4. Vegan Crocodile It's not uncommon to witness weird, bizarre events and practices in this ancient subcontinent. India is a land of impossibilities and rare occurrences. Here in Kerala, the world's most ferocious meat-eating creature survives on a vegan diet. She even follows orders. Meet Babia. This croc is the guardian of the temple. According to the local legend, at any one time, there's always only one croc in the lake. And as bizarre as it may sound, each time the guardian crocodile dies, another one pops up mysteriously and takes on the job of guarding the temple. And to this day, no one knows how each new crocodile appears in the lake. And like the people here, she feeds only on the temple's strict vegan diet, which is offered every day after the noon worship ceremony. The vegetarian meal features cooked rice and veggies and is fed to the friendly croc by the devotees fearlessly by their hands. It's hard for a meat-eating person to adopt a veggie diet, let alone a fiercely hardcore carnivorous animal to embrace vegan food, but this guardian crocodile is totally used to her healthy diet. The vegetarian croc is friendly and there's been no incidents of harming anyone, not even the fish in the lake. Number 3. World's Stinkiest Flower As one of the most heavily forested places on Earth, Indonesia is home to approximately 11% of the world's flowering plants and is home to many rare and endemic flora. One of the three national flowers of Indonesia, this plant can reach heights of 13 feet and weigh as much as 175 pounds. The flower is endemic to the rainforest of Borneo and Sumatra. It's rare and fairly hard to locate. It's especially difficult to locate the flowers in forests as the buds take many months to develop and the flower lasts for just a few days. It can grow to about three feet in diameter, the size of a bus tire. Dubbed the corpse flower, the large bloom reeks of rotting meat. They say it smells like a carcass in an advanced state of decomposition, earning it the well-deserved alternative name, stinking corpse lily. Carrion feeding flies are the flower's main pollinators because they find the stench irresistible. Interestingly, it has no leaves, stems, or roots. Its distinctive feature is the five huge petals. The petals are red with dots and its texture resembles leather. Its center is like a bowl that swallows flies and insects for its nutrients, rare and endangered. The reason for this is that many buds are harvested to be used in traditional medicine or to be eaten as a delicacy. Number 2 Royal Haunted House Malka Mahal is a hunting lodge in New Delhi, India. It was built in 1325. For now, the walls are occupied by bees and the ceilings are full of bats. Trees are growing through the windows and staircases that lead to the roof. Centuries after it was built, the monument has become almost one with its surroundings. For over three decades, the 14th century hunting lodge in the middle of Delhi's ridge forest inhabited by the self-proclaimed royal family of old remain out of bounds for those uninvited. Until 2017, not many had entered the lodge. One afternoon, the palace's last resident, a prince, was found dead. Since that September afternoon, the entry to the stone palace has become a free-for-all. A 500-year-old structure that was for decades strictly out of bounds has become the new haunt for the city's ghostbusters and those who want to experience the supernatural. The same forest houses the remaining boundary walls of an ancient water reservoir and an 800-year-old shrine on the tomb of Sufi Saint, which is surrounded by dozens of earthen pots said to imprison the spirits of bad souls. The caretaker still holds regular exorcisms here too. On video sharing websites, people are recording their scary and supernatural and spooky experiences at this palace. Number 1. The Bird Singing Club The century-old Singaporean tradition of bird keeping is itself an endangered species. Its continuing surviving depends on a small community of passionate enthusiasts. It's an expanse of parkland just north of central Singapore. Dozens of ornate cages dangle from tall poles, swaying gently in the breeze. In the cages perch an array of chirping songbirds. At ground level, their owners mill around, drinking tea and chatting. This is the Kaboon Peru Bird Singing Club. 
Every Sunday, its members gather to practice a dying Singaporean tradition. The birds perch in their ornate wooden cages beside hand-painted ceramic food dishes. A few timid first chirps rise up in the air and are answered. Soon, warbles and chirrups spring up from all around. The competition's judge paced between the rows of cages, pencils and clipboards in hand. Each bird is evaluated on volume, frequency and duration of song, the beauty of its melody, plumage and how actively it moves about its cage. Outside of the monthly competition days, dedicated hobbyists bring their birds to the club weekly or even daily to train. As social creatures, songbirds won't sing unless others of the same species are nearby. Jungles have played an essential part in preserving the planet. People have been blessed with food and water every day and fresh air to breathe thanks to jungles. And with discoveries like these, people keep coming back for more.